Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Kathy Conomurio, the Crafty Chica, and I'm here to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month with Michaels today. And I'm just so delighted and excited. I made this project when I got invited to do this and I just thought it would be super fun. We're going to do reverse glass painting. We have some shimmer in there. And what I did, you can see the little one over here. This one is a bigger one. I thought this one might be kind of challenging to do for a one hour project. So I just put, I also have the template for this if you're interested, but for today, we're going to make this one. So the inspiration for this project is from Mexican bingo loteria. And like with everything, I like to look at it and take the tradition and put my own spin on it. So that's what I did with this was to um, take the corazón and I added some flowers and another heart in there, just making it a little more crafty chica-ish, happy-ish. Now we have a template that you can use and use it as a guideline. It is totally up to you if you want to freestyle or embellish whatever way you would like. I just put it there so that if, if anyone didn't know where to start, they would have a pattern to go with. So what we are using, this is my favorite, these shadow boxes at Michael's. Now these come in so many different sizes and different uh, white and black and this wood color, eight by eight, nine by nine, nine by 12, 12 by 12. I have made so many projects with these and I've even like covered them with fabric in the back and put an ornament in the front and then painted the sides or glued things on there. I thought this would be perfect for this reverse glass painting because of the dimension that it shows. So I'm going to set my main project aside and if we can get speaker view on the demo table, I will show you how we can get rolling with this. Okay, my speaker view is of me. If we could get it to be the demo area, let's see. Um, what happened here? I'm sorry about that. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I just had to click the little button over there. All right. So here is our box. We're going to start by opening it up. this and we're going to very carefully remove this backing and remove this paper and then you're going to have the little separation that makes it a shadow box we're going to take that out as well set that aside and here we have our glass so you might want to look at your glass. If there's any fingerprints, you can go ahead and take an alcohol swab or a tissue and clean that off. Most likely it will be on the front of the glass, so you could always clean it later. This is the pattern. Now you can print this pattern out to different sizes depending on how big of the shadow box you have. So here's a jumbo one. This would be great for the 9 by 12 size or 12 by 12. Here's a little smaller. Here's a super small one. We are using this size, and this is about six and a half inches by six and a half inches. So for this project, you can decide if you want to put the black border. For this one that I made, I didn't, I decided I liked it without the black border. So I'm not going to do the black border. I just drew it because I thought it looked like the card. But what you do want to do is make sure that it's centered on your glass. So you can either eyeball it. I'm going to try to move this so you can see painting better. How about like that? Okay. Or you can actually measure it if you want. So for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just tape this down. So I have some masking tape. You could also use painter's tape. 
And as you notice, the printout is backwards because it's reverse glass painting. For a normal painting, you would start with the background and then add paint on top. This one, we're starting backwards. Everything that's gonna be on the front of the picture, we have to paint it first and then cover it up. So I'm just taping these down so it'll be nice and secure. Like this. I have my little paint palette here. And let's talk brushes. So because these are such fine lines, you could probably even use a paint pen if you wanted. I have these brushes and this is what I do with my brushes. I have some select brushes where I actually trim the hairs on them so that they're very fine and very skinny. And it just really allows me to get into those small grooves. That is totally up to you. You do not have to hack your paint brushes. You know, I'm, I am always making all kinds of different projects and I like to adapt the tools to fit so I have the most success. So that's why I cut my brushes. I, one time I was sitting at a conference with a, a brush manufacturing company and they clutched their pearls when I told them and they're like, what kind of brush do you need? We'll just make a brush that size. Okay, so we're gonna start with black paint. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. Now, here's the trick with this is we want it to dry pretty fast so that we can get moving on this project. So we don't wanna put a lot, where can I get the template? Um, it should be in your Michael's email with the, when you signed up for the class, I think they should have sent you the template. But if not, you can just follow along with your own design, like just one big heart or however you'd like to do it. So I'm going to dip my brush in the water and I'm going to thin it out. So it's just kind of inky. And I'm going to do the outline first of this heart. Bear with me, I am left-handed. So I hope you can see everything. All of these little details you can totally do your own thing with those, whatever is most comfortable for you. But we're gonna do a thin layer of this black. And it's gonna be a little difficult to see because we're painting black on top of black, but you just kind of go with it. And just follow along the lines. And you know what, there's so many, once you get this technique down, you are gonna wanna make it for so many things. Like you could put a, uh, a portrait underneath and then outline it with the black. And, and when you're all done coloring it and filling it in, it will look like a really neat animation type of picture. So these lines that we're putting, these are normally the, the lines that we would put at the end of our painting to tie it all together. But for reverse glass painting, we're going to do it first. I purposely did not drink coffee today because I knew I would be doing fine line detail. <laughs> yes, I know that from experience. One time I, I love to drink espresso in the morning and one time I had to teach a class and my hand was like literally like this. So now no coffee if I'm teaching classes. And this year, this is a very special year for me because this year is 20 years of Crafty Chica. So those of you who are thinking about, you know, how you would love to leave your nine to five and do a creative job like crafting full-time, it is possible. If you follow my TikTok account, I share a lot of details and tips and things that I've learned. I have a series on there for book publishing, for trademarking, um, lots of marketing stuff. So I just love to share what I've learned to help other people. And if you don't want to do a business, that's fine too. Sometimes we just need to keep crafting as a way to, to relieve stress. So I'm just following along with these lines. 
And because this is your, if this is your first time doing this, give yourself some grace. Like, do not expect perfection. We're just warming up. We're having fun with this. We're trying out different things so that when it's all done, we can look at it and say, oh, I know what I want to do next time. I want to do another one of these. But if you are like me, you're going to use your 40% off coupon and go buy a stack of these shadow box. I think these will make such great gifts for the holidays because you can personalize them. And I know like all of the Cricut and vinyl cutting stuff is so popular right now, but you know what? Sometimes I like, and I, I use, you can see this is a recent project I did with my Cricut. I made a um, inspired by Jane the Virgin, inhala, exhala, <laughs> inhale, exhale. So I use my vinyl cutting machine a lot, but you know what? Sometimes it's fun to do what I call a left turn where everyone's ex used to one thing and then you come up with something different. So I think this would be a great left turn for the holidays to just say, hey, I painted this by hand. You could take any, you could even take a magazine picture and put it underneath and, um, you know, just have fun with it and make it your own little fantasy type of picture, any color of skin, any color of hair. Every so often, dip your brush and rinse it and then pull it through to make it sharp again. You don't want the paint to dry on your paintbrush. So I'm just going through again, picking up some of this black. And I did these outlines and now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do all of these little details the best that I can. And if anyone has any questions along the way, go right ahead. Crafty storytelling is always fun. So now I'm going to do this little flower. And you know what? I just, I'm wearing, um, oh, I want to show you guys something. So my dad, he passed away at 73, like 11 years ago. Look what one of his childhood friends gave me. My dad made this in like the late 1950s. It's resin and he carved the flower and put ink in there to make it look like a rose. Isn't that just so cool? Let me turn the light on, see if you can see it any better. But this is resin from 1950 something. So crafting definitely runs in my family. People always ask me that, like, is anyone else in your family creative? And um, yes, I come from a long line of crafty people. Okay, so now I'm going to do another stem over here. And the good thing about keeping this thin is we want it to dry quickly. That way we can fill in with color. If you put too much black paint, then you're going to have to wait for it to dry. Now, if we had more time, I would say go through, let it dry, and then go through and do a second coat so that you get really strong, bold black lines. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go through and outline it. If you see any areas that has like a glob of paint on it, go through with your brush and just kind of pull that paint to stretch it out, to thin it out. That will help it dry. Cause I, I really would love to see you guys get through the finished project with this. Okay, so I can tell I've done all the flowers. Now I'm gonna go through and do some of these detail swirls. And for this, I'm just, I just filled in with some random patterns. You could do X's and O's, you could do dashes. You could see here, I have some dots. For my dots, I'm gonna just go through and like this. Kathy, we have a question from the chat. Sure. Would you or could you use a Sharpie for this project? You know, I have not tried a Sharpie, but you could try it. You could definitely try it. I think that it might be a little sheer because um, sometimes, you know, marker on glass, it, it won't be as opaque, but I know a paint pen 
you could use a paint pen, like a fine tip paint pen would work really nicely. There's a lot of ways you could mix up this idea to do something different with it. And now I'm just adding these little dashes. I just came up with some random things. I, I'm the type of designer and artist where I love to fill in the negative space. Like I can't just leave it blank. I have to fill it with something. So it really does all depend on your personality and what appeals to you. So you could do, you know, you could outline someone's name and then fill it in with different patterns. I love combining textures. So with this, we have the paint and then we have the texture of the glittered background. So it just really makes it pop. So now I'll do the bottom of this arrow. Yeah, I think a like a Sharpie paint pen would be super fun. Okay, now that this is going on, this is all pretty much, I could fill in with these little dots here. I'll just do a few of them. And if you don't have a shadow box, any picture frame, you could use a picture frame. So you're gonna look through, make sure you've got everything. And then we'll go on to the lettering. And again, it's going to be backwards. That's why it helps to have it printed out. So I'm a lefty, so I, I always start, <laughs> I do all of my lettering this way, moving that way. We have another question in the chat. Sure. Have you used stained glass paint? Yes, I have used stained glass paint. So another way that you could do this is you could actually use the black leading, maybe a little bit bigger piece than this small. And yeah, you could outline it in the black leading, let it dry, and then fill it in with the stained glass paint. So this one is, um, I don't know the name for it in Spanish, but when I was in San Miguel de Allende, we went through Artisan Alley, which is like this mar marketplace where all the different artists sell their wares. And there was this family that all we did was reverse glass painting. And because it's very um, resourceful, all of the supplies are easily attainable. All you need is a picture frame and glass, and then they would line the back of it with foil. And it just looks so pretty. And it's just taking everyday things that you have on hand or you have excess of and turning them into art. So for this one, I'm gonna use my bigger brush. Here's a little bit thicker brush for the slattery. But yeah, that's what's fun about it is that, you know, this is just one technique. There's so many different ways. Like you could even put down vinyl cut stickers or letters and then paint over it and peel it off and you know have something that way. So there's just a lot of fun techniques that you can do. I really like this because it's just it's just super easy. And this part is okay if your paint is a little bit thick because we're not really going to add anything on top of it. So you want to get it to be nice and bold. And this is my own lettering. So if you don't like it, you can do, you know, use your own lettering. I know there's a lot of people who are so talented with their lettering skills. And I'm gonna add these little flourishes. 
this little accent mark. Okay, so we have this all. I'm going to let this dry just for a sec. It helps to have a fan on. Do any of you have a fan in your craft room? I know I do <laughs> because it helps things to dry. Now, at this point, what you can do is lift up your tape. And carefully pick up your glass, turn it around and make sure you got everything. So ooh, I missed my little outside edge there. So I'm going to put it back down. I'm going to line it up. Like this. Put the tape back down. And and if you feel like you can't line it up straight, you could just keep it separate and just, you know, draw it yourself. When I'll do that. Okay. I know I might be going a little fast. I'm a very fast crafter. <laughs> okay, so now we have all of this and kind of looks like a little bean, huh, with the heart right there. So I might go in, you know, and add a little more detail around this heart. Just a little bit. Just like that, okay. Now we wanna set this aside to dry. And we're going to, so we're done with the pattern. Now we're going to take the base, the background of the shadow box, and we're going to pick out our glittered cardstock. So I don't know if any of you follow my Instagram stories, but I did the whole journey of me searching for the perfect glittered cardstock for this. And Michael's ended up having the, a sale on their pads. It was like, I don't know, buy one, get one free. I bought all this glitter scrap of paper. And then it was so funny because I was reading everyone's messages and they were like, oh my gosh, I went to Michael's and I loaded up as well. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go with gold. I just love this gold. And it's, I love how it is, it has like this ombre effect to it. This is the recollections signature special and all of them you can see where it kind of goes you can barely tell dark to a little bit light so i'm going to go i'm going to put this here i'm going to put it in the middle i'm going to trace it out right in the middle see so if i can get some of that graduation of the glitter Are you liking it so far? Like I could just see so, so many variations of this. And you know what? We're gonna do a little giveaway. So if you guys finish your project, and post it on Instagram and tag Crafty Chica and Michaels. I'm gonna choose one person to, to win this. I'll ship you my finished piece. Okay, so now we're going, here's our backing and we're going to affix this here. So there's different ways you could do this. You can use, um, you know, your double-sided tape like this or, any, I like using dry adhesives for something like this. I want to make sure it's super sturdy. And I'm just going to line it up. Okay, that is ready to go. 
and you can see it has that cool graduation going from the left to the right. And if you want, if I wanted, I could do it this way. Just remember the top. And I'm going to trim this excess here. And this is definitely one of those projects where anytime I see a shadow box, I just, I have actually my very first book was titled Making Shadow Boxes and Shrines. So I've just always been obsessed with making dimensional pieces. Okay, now this is dry. So we're gonna place it down here. Let's move some of that glitter out of the way. And we're going to tape down the edges. And if you want, I mean, you don't wanna cut your fingers. So you could put the tape around the edges so that it doesn't get in your way. You don't wanna hurt yourself crafting. And I'm just gonna put one right there. Alrighty, so now is the fun part. Now we're gonna fill all of this in with color. So we're gonna take another look. It looks like everything is dry. Again, if we had more time, we could go through, if we needed to change anything, we could use a craft knife to scrape the paint off and redo it, or maybe add a second coat of the black paint so that you know it looks very, very bold. But for now, we want to get through the, the hour. We don't want to run too far over. So we're going to go ahead and add the color. So the first thing I'm going to start with this little heart here. And I think I'm going to go with some pink. And I'm just using regular craft paint. If you have the multi-purpose paint that works on, on glass, that works great too. It, then you won't need a sealer. So I'm just going to mix this up. So I have some magenta and some light pink because I wanna have a color that's a little bit different than the red. I'm gonna add a dark red. So I'm gonna make a little custom color of this pink. Ooh, that's a nice color right there. And I'm going to go on the inside of this little red heart. And I'm gonna paint right on top of the black. And it's okay if you touch the black, you won't be able to see it because it's reverse. Same thing, you want to go light, a thin coat. That way it will dry quickly. And then you can go back in with the second coat. So now I'm going to add the teal around this red and that teal. Kathy, we have another question from the chat. Sure. Um, for the project, for is it okay to use acrylic paint as long as uh, it, we make sure that we seal it? Yes, yes. I'm using acrylic paint right now. So um, I'm using the folk art acrylic. Um, you could use any kind of like any kind of acrylic. If it is a um, a more watery brand, just do a coat, let it dry, and add a second coat. You don't have to use glass paint for this. You could use whatever paint you have on hand. That's what I. That's why I really love this project. And then I'm adding teal around all the little scallops around the heart. This is this project is dedicated to those of us who have a heart within our heart. <laughs> right? Okay, so now that I have that coat, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do another coat of the pink. The more opaque the better but even at that i'll show you a little tip that we're going to do that will make it pop even more so that's good we can just let that sit like that not too globby because we want it to be able to dry in time and now let's add the red or actually let's do these little flowers so i think i'll do a teal flower here 
or maybe I'll do blue. This is a good project to, once you get all of your color down, to go take a little break and walk around, put this in front of the fan just to help it dry faster. So again, I'm just doing a thin coat here so that we can get, get it dried. And then this one, I think I'll do yellow. And a tiny dot of here. Mix this up. It's kind of like a marigold yellow oh yeah that's nice okay mix it up a little bit so remember if you want to do any highlights like you know shading all of that's going to go first and then your color behind that so keep that in mind as you're doing this. If you, right now, I'm not really adding any shading because of time, but if I wanted, I could add like a darker layer of red on all of these outline areas, just to give it a little bit of, of dimension. And, but for right now, we're just gonna go through like this. And I think the key really is that you wanna have some nice thin brushes. This is also a great class to, to teach or for like girls night or something different than canvas painting. And it's just picture frames. And I love Michael's has so many cool picture frames. Like, I think this would be fun to do little ones like little mini ones for ornaments or to as gift tags. And I'm gonna add a little dot of pink in the middle of this orange. Well, the mag from the chat has a question for you. Sure. Um, for using the fan, um, do you get air bubbles with that, or is there a way? No. To that? Nope. Okay, so I just used my craft knife and I removed a little bit of black paint because I want to add a little dot of teal in the center, just like this. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my red. So let's see. So I want to pick a red that's kind of contrasting. Karen, and another question for you. Sure. Um, how do you keep the paint from looking streaky or seeing brush strokes on this? Okay, so the trick is to put more layers of color. So see this paint where you can see the brush strokes? If I add another, it has to be completely dry. You can add another layer of color on top and it's going to make it nice and opaque, nice and solid like that but you have to make sure it's dry so let me show you this one here's a sample this was probably two coats this heart right here so you could see around there you know this was about two coats but what we're going to do is the last step is we paint white over the whole thing and we give it a little halo of white and that is what really, really makes it pop. So now I have, I'm gonna use two different colors of red on this. You don't have to, but let's see. Just for, I'm gonna use one for 
this side just to give it something a little different. And then let's see, I think I'll do these up here. Okay, now, and then I could add some over here too. I think I'll add a little bit over here. Oh, I forgot the leaves. I got to paint green for the leaves. So here's some green. And I'm gonna go in here. And remember, if I wanted to do highlighting, I would put the a, like a little thing of, of white first and then the darker green. Anything that you're gonna see on the front, you want to put it first. Okay, so there's my green. And now I'll go in with my red. So we're only going to put red on all of the open spaces. At the end, we'll add the yellow there. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not gonna press too hard. I'm just gonna kind of pat it on there. If you brush too hard, you could move the paint or scrape the paint off. We don't wanna do that. So this first layer, be gentle. And how are we doing on time? Uh, we are currently at uh, the, uh, 42 minutes past the hour. So we got about 18 okay. minutes left. Oh, perfect, okay. So I'm just going around and I'm gonna fill all this in. You want to add more highlights, you know, just remember to do that part first and if you do make a mistake like after you turn it over and look at it you know what you could always scrape it off and try again i have done that put the windex down it's okay it's art we're being creative you're allowed to change it whenever you want there's a little bit of a learning curve to this so just allow yourself to have fun and learn we learn from the mistakes that we make so we can do better next time. You know, some of my earlier drawings from, I don't know, like maybe 15 years ago, I tried so hard and I, they just did not look good at all. And I was so bummed and I just kept trying and trying and, and I put them away. I never threw them away, but I kept them. And then I just kept practicing and I, I got my iPad and I started using Procreate and I decided to find those old pictures. So I took those old drawings that I did, I incorporated them into Procreate and I created a new layer so I could redo them with what I learned. And I just, I never realized how far I came in my skills. And it made me so proud to see that I didn't give up that even though they looked horrible before, like I didn't even know like how to line up the ears with the nose. I just like went for, not that you have to follow that, but I was just, I just pushed myself to learn. And 10 years later, I now I'm an official licensed illustrator where I do greeting cards and planners and um, design scrapbook paper. And all of that came because I allowed myself to make mistakes and learn. And I just embraced it as part of the process to grow. So anytime you're trying a new craft, give yourself permission to make mistakes and learn, make yourself make mistakes so that you see what happens. Okay, so now I have this. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk, by the way. And it's okay if it hits over the other colors because again, it's behind it. And I'm gonna go on top of here, just covering up that pink. 
this. And now I'm going to add the yellow for the arrow. The reveal is so fun. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Okay, so see the arrow here? So I'm going to use this brush. This is a longer liner brush. And I'm just going to go through and like that. Down here. And then I could even add some other colors here. Just kind of like a little halo of it. Okay. So this is the part where we have to really let it dry because what, oh, I forgot the little heart. There's a little heart dripping off of the arrow. So let's paint that red. And I realized I forgot my A still needs a little bit of work. So here's my black. And then you can go in while this is drying, you could look at your lettering and just scrape away any parts that you don't want. You want to get it nice and clean off of there. And take this, fan this, and I'm going to flatten this out a little bit. I'm just flattening this to make it dry faster because I want to show you this final step that's going to bring it all together. So even if yours is not completely dry right now, that's okay. Just watch what I'm going to do with this so that when yours is dry, you can do this, but don't mess up your project to try to rush it. So. We have two questions in the chat for you. Sure. So the first is, could you name the tool uh, that you use to scrape away your paint? Yes, so this is a craft knife. And this is from Fiskars. It's the little, I don't know what you call it, the finger knife. I think it's called the finger knife. But any kind of craft, you could even use your fingernail. Just anything just to scrape away the, any excess. Perfect. And then the other question yeah. is, how long does it take to dry typically? Um, it usually takes a, a few minutes, you know, like this one, I, I ended up doing, I think three, two to three coats. So I can still see some of the glimmer around here, but what I can get started on to show you is the outline because that will let it dry, but the outline we can start now. So for the outline, I'm going to use the white. And real quick, I can see around this heart that I still need some more red in there. So I'm just going to fill in anywhere where you see the glass. Go in and add a little bit of color because it'll be worth it once it's all done. Just like that. And if you see any big blotches of paint that you can carefully smooth out you can do that but if you're not in a hurry while you're making this project what like what i did with my sample i would do a layer go do something come back do another layer or i would if i'm working on a couple of them at a time like this one you can see is very opaque i did like several layers on this one so I started with the outline and then I added the black lines, the purple lines for her hair. And then I added the brown last. And I, I added fabric as a backing for that one. 
Okay, so now I have the white and I'm gonna use this brush. Make sure you have a clean brush. And it looks like my out my sides here are pretty much dry, so I'm gonna go for it. And we're just going to dip our brush, not too thick, and just go create a little halo around the outside. Because once it's all done, it will just make it stand out more. Just make sure the paint's dry. Kathy, we have a couple more questions from the chat. Sure. Uh, the first of which is what sealer do you recommend at the end? You could use Mod Podge. Any kind of water-based sealer is per brush on sealer is good. So anything like, uh, you know, like a clear Mod Podge, either matte or gloss, it doesn't matter because it's gonna, no one's gonna see it. It's just to keep it sealed in there and it, to protect it. I mean, technically you don't really need a sealer because no one's gonna be touching it. It's gonna be inside the shadow box, but I just like to put a sealer because it looks more finished and polished that way. Great, thank you. And then the next question is, would you recommend using a hot air gun or uh, air dryer to no, dry? No, I think, um, if, I mean, if you're in a hurry, you could probably, you know, if you used a heat gun far away, don't get up close because then it will bubble. But I just have an old school fan and I have a table in front of it. And I, I actually use, this is a little crafty tip that I do. I use uh, cafeteria trays and I put my project on a cafeteria tray so that I can easily transport it without messing it up or touching it. So I will just put that in front of the fan while I'm working on the next one. And then I'll put the next one there and bring, I also do ceramics too. So I'm, I'm just always using that fan. It's just a, like a little desk fan. Okay, so now I have this outline of white and I'm gonna give it one more coat going around and then it'll be time to fill in the rest of it. We're almost done. Again, I went kind of fast because we had an hour, but you get the gist of this. <laughs> and one more question that's popping up. Uh, does the sealer cover the entire glass or just the painted? Part? No, just the painted part, just the painted part. So there's other things that you can do though. Like if you wanted to, uh, maybe you could glue sequins to the back of this, like rows of sequins or little crystals would be super cute, like flat back crystals. On here, remember everything's facing forward. So you want the glass to remain crystal clear and transparent. I mean, if you wanted, you could use like a, um, a stained glass spray, like a spray paint for, for glass to get a, a sheer look. That could be kind of neat. Okay, so I'm gonna go in now and I just see one little area that's still kind of wet. So I'm, I'm just gonna go around. So I'm using a, a round brush and I'm just gonna add a coat of white paint over this whole thing. And I'm gonna start where the first places where I painted and be gentle with this first coat because you don't wanna scratch the paint underneath. This does not have to go on perfectly. No one's gonna see this part. What this does is it just gives it a nice boost behind the color so it looks extra bright and vibrant. And we're just gonna coat it all the way. And this is your choice. Like once you look at it after it's done, if you think it needs a second coat of white behind it, you can totally do that too. And this is just like a crafty chica thing. I like having that little white halo around it. I just feel like it kind of like when you have a sticker, you know, like, um, like here's a little sugar skull sticker I made. See how it has that little halo around it. It just makes it look a little finished. That's just my style though. You don't have to put the little halo.
So I had the yellow was a little bit wet, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna just add a little bit here on the heart. And I know it's still wet, but I wanna flip it around to show you and assemble it. And then after I'm done assembling it, I can take it apart and let it dry. But I want you to see what it will look like. So we're removing the tape. And we have our frame. So we're going to take our piece. See, look at that, isn't that cute? And then we're gonna place it face down like this. And then we're going to put this little riser piece in here, the shadow box element. And then make sure that the little hook is at the top. I'm going to put that in and then close it up like this. And then when we turn it over, there it is. So one thing that we could do also um, is I love to paint the frame also. So I'm gonna use this green and I'm just going to add some little hash marks. So this, it does have a finish on it, the frame. So you could lightly sand it down if you wanted, or you could put a second coat of paint and then put sealer on top of everywhere where you put the paint. So you can see the one that I have here. I can't wait to see what your pieces look like. And another little thing I use, I'll use like a little Lazy Susan and I'll put that, I have it packed away, but that way I can just turn it easily. I'm just gonna go through like this. My style is I just like painting on everything. I can never leave anything just blank. And going through. Does anyone have any other questions? No current questions, but everyone is just saying thank you and they loved the class. And oh, good. I know we went a little fast, but you can just take your time on this. So you can see, let me show you a couple little features here. So you can see where I did the lettering. It looks a little thin. So see the R, the tail on the R? This way, I could have gone over and put a second coat of black paint if I wanted to make it bolder. But you can see how the white paint just adds a little bit of a halo effect. It just makes it stand out a little bit more. And when choosing the background color, you want to use a color that will really make the, the heart piece, your, your painted piece pop. So this glitter is a little bit lighter than this one. You can see this one looks gorgeous. I used a, a darker shade of the glittered cardstock for this one. And you can see the difference between the two. This one's a little bit lighter. So I wouldn't use black because it would blend in with the words um you could i like using contrast so i think like teal would be really pretty behind it or maybe purple just whatever your favorite color is and you can see i went kind of fast it looks like a little bean this one i i spent a lot more time on it really following the pattern that i drew so it looks more like a like a heart but again it, i mean it is your choice however you would like to do it you can take this idea and run with it. Again, I think it's fun to um, take a magazine picture and put it underneath or put a picture of you or your kids underneath, maybe your grandmother when she was really young. 
and then just do that tracing around her face with the black and then fill in with colors and flowers and all kinds of things and it it just looks so nice and it's so simple because it's just craft paint craft paint and some sealer that's all it takes to do this project and again you could use a beautiful shadow box you could use a picture frame there's just so many you know from big to big to small it's it's your choice whatever you want to do thank you so much i'm seeing all of the nice comments please follow me on instagram at crafty chica and um i'm on tiktok at crafty chica i give a lot of business tips on tiktok about you know being a professional crafter and designer i have a new book that comes out in november oh my gosh so the book comes out November 30th, but I'm doing a hundred dollar gift box giveaway for anyone who pre-orders. So you could go to um, my website, craftychica.com or my Instagram for my link and you purchase the copy of the book and then you put your uh, the receipt number and then you're entered to win. So I have my Crafty Chica candles in there, a hand painted mug. Here's a mug I recently made chula <laughs> so um yeah it's just a fun promotion and it's i'm only doing it for pre-orders because it's just an exciting time thank you so much you guys i've seen all of your comments and thank you for the boost of positive energy what a wonderful way to kick off hispanic heritage month and thank you so much to michaels i mean this is my 20 year anniversary with crappy chica Michaels has been there from day one to support me from the manager and the retail stores to people at corporate all along. They have just been so supportive of helping me be successful in my business. And I'm just so grateful and honored for that. So you guys keep working on what it is that you want to do, whether if it's crafting to relax and unwind or crafting a career for yourself, all of it is there for you. So I hope you have a, a beautiful rest of the day and go celebrate local makers in your community um, for Hispanic Heritage Month, everybody. Devoya is here. Hi, Devoya. <laughs> this is so awesome. It's like a big craft party. Hi, Lynn. Oh, thank you. You're great. Yes, kudos to Michaels for sponsoring this. That is. When I saw the email come through, I was like, oh, oh my God, I get to teach a class. <laughs> and then I started telling people and, and people were so excited to sign up. So thank you. Hi, Olga. Yes, yeah, super all around. Thank you. And I don't know what time we're at right now. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just about at that time. So if, if there's any last Perfect. minute things you wanted to say on the way out and then we'll wave goodbye for the day. Okay, great. I'd say if you have your piece and you finish it, if you post it on Instagram, tag me, tag Michaels, and then I'll choose one of those people I'll, like on Friday. And then I'll send you whichever one you want that I painted. I'll send it to you with some other little Crafty Chica goodies in there too. I love sending goodie boxes out. So I'm always looking for a reason. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye-bye. <laughs>